Hi, everyone. Um, so this is the uh, recording around the body of your literature review. So the main uh, chunk of your assignment for this is going to be the body. So if you've watched the recording um, around the introduction, you know the last thing, the last paragraph of your introduction is going to be that path that very clearly delineates what are going to be the main buckets that uh, I'm going to discuss within the body of the paper. So that is where when you have reviewed your literature and you're looking across all of the articles that you've pulled, you are going to start to see some common themes. Um, as you're synthesizing, well, what is this literature review saying, or not literature review, what is this article saying, what did these researchers find, what happened in this study, and you're going to start to see some common elements. And those common elements are what I call your big buckets. So that if you literally had three buckets in front of you, um, and you labeled each one with a different theme that was common throughout the, um, the articles that you reviewed, you would just, you drop you know, paper one into this bucket, paper two into the same one, but paper three shows more of this theme and you drop it into that bucket. So um, the big buckets are what are going to organize your literature review. So Melanie, in this example for this literature review, um, she was looking at play and early childhood education. And so um, one of the first things to remember is that what you are not doing is listing each article and what and summarizing each one. That is not a literature review. If you were to say, um, Shing and Ray, 2016, in their study found this. Deluca and Pyle, in 2017, their research actually discovered this. And you just start listing. That is not um, how we want this literature review to go. You can summarize what. Um, Obviously, the, the researchers found in their study, but be cool if you can synthesize, which means you're understanding the, the links and the contrasts and the connections between the different articles. Um, so I'll show you first how Melanie organized her big buckets. Um, she had three categories, social emotional impacts of play, learning through play, and outdoor play. So you see that path, and then you see her subheadings, social emotional impact of play, academic, academic benefits of play and play-based learning, and the shift in beliefs on outdoor play. So you can see she very clearly stated what her three buckets were, and then those three bucket headings became her subheadings for this paper. Um, so, and again, remember Purdue OWL is a great resource for you to use organize headings, what is centered, what is not. Um, so, so use that resource. So when she was analyzing and uh, her, or synthesizing all of the, the literature that she reviewed, she noticed these three main themes, and that is how she organized her literature. But still, even as she's organizing it this way, she's not just saying, well, they said these things. In a way, she's also saying, and here's what I say about it. So it's what I call like they say, I say. So you're analyzing and you're interpreting. Um, so for example, she said, play provides children with many opportunities to practice social behavior and self-regulate. Ching and Ray, and then she, she talks about what they did. Um, after play therapy was implemented, parents were able to see improvement, they concluded this. So you can see she summarizes what they have there. But her interpretation is that play provides children with many opportunities to practice social behavior. That's her interpretation of this piece. And then she connects that piece with teachers also finding that play can benefit students' social, emotional well-being. That's her interpretation. And then she mentions to Luca and Kyle. And so she's, she's summarizing these, but she's also providing her spin on on saying, here's what they said and what they did in the study. And I'm interpreting it to mean this. So it's my interpreter. They say, I say. Um, another piece that you need to keep in mind is the uh, critical evaluation of, of the articles and research studies that you utilize. Um, so if you are reading and utilizing um, an article within your research, or sorry, within your literature review, 
and there's some deficiencies in it or there's some differences in it that you consider weaknesses when compared to children. You can include those as well. So maybe the sample size was really small. Um, maybe the um, when you're looking at the context of where um, you know half of your studies were, they were all urban or all suburban, um, something like that, where you're looking at, you're being a critical consumer of research. Just because it's research, doesn't mean that it doesn't have deficiencies or weaknesses within it. Um, I think that's something that uh, beginning researchers, like a fallacy, they think, well, if it's published, then it must be perfect. Not the case. Um, just because it's a published article does not mean it or things that could be built upon. Um, so that's another thing. To consider. Um, another thing I want you to focus on is just good writing, which is transition words connecting one paragraph to another. Um, you can see that from this paragraph to this one, Melanie linked them. This one was more about um, peer-based play. Teachers finding that play really helps you in social, well, uh, social and emotional well-being. And as she switches gears to um, a different topic, but still within the same bucket, she says, Social emotional learning is not only important between peers, academic learning can also be very emotional when they have an emotional attachment to their learning. You can see she, she didn't just finish her thoughts within this one, within this um, paragraph, and just immediately launch into academic learning. She connects the two. She says this one had more to do with, this paragraph had more to do with peers and their kind of uh, play and that social emotional learning there. And then she connects it to say, and while this is important, also, that's good writing. That helps a reader be able to follow your line of thinking in a way that doesn't feel very, here's this topic, now this one, now this one. They connect. And maybe they connect in a comparative way where this one is similar to this one. Or maybe they connect in more of a contrastive way, like she did here. Yes, they can do this within peers. And in a different way, here's another way to think about social media. Um, so that is a way that you can think about some words or topic sentences like she just did there. You can laugh and comfort to draw connections between ideas in the same paragraph, or to draw contrast or comparison, things like that that just make for a really strong. Um, so I will mention one other thing outside of just APA formatting, which you will be expected to have it um, formatted in APA. One of the tips um, that I've, I've told students before is if you are reading your literature review and one paragraph, one, one or two paragraphs is just about one study, you're probably not synthesizing the way that you want to. So, so, for example, if this paragraph and this paragraph were all just about Chikeza and Soren's 2016 study, that's not a synthesis of multiple research articles in, in one heading. You can see she mentions Chikeza and Soren, connects it at the same time with Larkin, Rushton, and Rushton, and then also mentions Edwards in 2016. So you can see in a, in a couple of paragraphs, She's bringing together multiple researchers whose um, findings or methods or something about their article have some common thematic element that she was able to synthesize and bring together and write about. So that being you know, just kind of a thing to look for um, as you're writing or when you're finished writing and you're reviewing it, um, having you know, one, one paragraph um, mentioning uh, one researcher article is fine. Um, just make sure you're not doing the, this research article said this, this one said this, this one said this, and there's no common theme or um, something that ties them together. There should be something that ties them together. Um, I believe that should be about it for the body of your study. You can see that, again, the subheadings match what she um, said she was going to talk about in the body of her paper. Um, Here's another great, as I'm scrolling through, another great transition. 
play inside the classroom, as mentioned above, can be a controversial topic for educators. Play outside the school walls is now becoming a controversial topic as well. So can you see how she linked her original, or not original, her second idea was the academic benefits of play and play-based learning within the classroom. And as she shifts to her next theme, the outdoor play theme, she pulls that idea down. She says, okay, so we've talked about play inside the classroom and that can be a hard topic for teachers. But you know what? At the same time, she's connecting. Play outside the school walls is also becoming a tricky topic to talk about. So just a really like beautiful, smoothly written um, literature review where Melanie did a great job of taking the resources um, provided to her in, in my class and saying, okay, it's, it's basically a formula you can follow when it comes to how the structure looks. But the art of it, the art of the writing comes in the synthesis of it when you're, when you're looking at your art research articles and saying, okay, what do these have in common? What big buckets am I seeing as I uh, read all of these? And then the art of just having some really beautiful um, transitional uh, or topic sentences that either connect ideas or show the contrast or compare them. It's just, it really makes it a, a great thing to be able to read and grade. Um, so that being said, I feel like there was one more thing that I wanted to mention. And I've lost it. Well, I know one of your main topics that are within uh, your your guiding document. Um, so if you have any questions about the body, oh, that was it. Got it. It came back. Okay. So one one trick that some people works really well for them is to um, print out when you're talking about the big buckets. You're not really sure. Is to print out your articles and use three or four different color highlighters. And as you're reading, you're, you may be highlighting in yellow um, the things that have to do, like if you're talking about the after school example, um, the, the things that you have to do, anything in that article that has to do with um, who the counselors of the after school program were, or for Melanie, maybe as she was reading all of these articles, she in pink was all, always highlighting in pink anything that had to do with outdoor play. And so for the first one or two or even three articles you're reading, you're not going to really know what to highlight as far as things, but you're going to start to see it pretty quickly. Um, as you're, you're going to see that within this body of research, there are themes that are similar, and those can be your big buckets. So sometimes that, that can be a trick that's helped um, other students where they're like, I'm not sure what my big buckets are until I start highlighting the important things. And as I'm three or four articles in, I'm starting to see, oh, this is something that keeps coming up over and over again. This can be one of my buckets. Um, and, and then as they continue to read their articles, they can use that same color to highlight for that main theme. And then they can pull it into um, their literature. So, yeah, there was one. Okay, so if there's anything, any questions that you have, I have always said in this class, send me what you've got. Don't wait until the last week of class um, to send me your literature review, because I know you're writing it, you know, before that. So if, if you want to send me the first two pages, if you want to send me your introduction, if you want to send me your body and it's halfway done, am I on the right track, Dr. Bowie? Please do. I'm more than happy to review what you've written and give you some feedback um, because the, the important part is the learning and the writing within it, not a gotcha when you turn it in and we you know, take points off for things. So please feel free to email me um, whatever you have as far as a draft. And I will be happy, happy, happy to give you feedback. Or if you need to Zoom with me or talk with me on the phone, just send me an email and we'll get back. All right. We'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks so much. Bye.